This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. 10 years ago, a game came out about being in London. Now, not just the daytime London looking at the bridges in the skies, the deep dark city streets of London where Jack the Ripper's running around and trying to escape after a murder. And today we're gonna look at the 10th anniversary edition of Mr. Jack, but I've already reviewed this. Uh, if you wanna see that, you can see that, click the description below. But this is a comparison of the first edition and this next edition, because there's quite a huge amount of tactical decisions that are different now once this game has been redone, let me show you every difference in the game. First, let's take a look at the difference of the boxes. Uh, earlier box, new box. It's quite different. Uh, and obviously this is a darker theme, sort of that dark blue light. Uh, definitely looks different. Uh, it's, you know, this is gonna be a personal preference which one you like better, but they definitely were going for a different look. Now, the new box is going to be more apt to be confused with the sequel, Mr. Jack in New York, because it's also a darker box. Uh, Jack is depicted a lot, you know, much similar uh, versus say, you know, the, this box, which you can clearly tell is quite different. The rule book definitely looks a lot better with the new version. This version had a ton of different languages in it, but I can understand why they did that. This one had just English, so they must be printing different copies of games for different areas, which is also interesting. But I love the front cover of this much more than this. Also, the rules have a fold-out page, which is huge, and shows you how to set the game up, which is something you look at pretty often in this game when you're setting up, unless you've got it memorized. But this is a really nuts, nice touch here to have that fold-out piece. Let's look at the different character cards. On the bottom is the first edition, and the top is the 10th anniversary. Obviously the first biggest difference is that all the characters look 10 years older, which I think is really cool and thematic. But the cards I like better too, because it's a more of a close-up shot. You can actually see a little bit more of the character features in the new version, so I definitely like the new version better in this regard. And for the other four characters, first edition, 10th anniversary, same comments here. Characters look a lot older, which is really cool, but they're also a lot closer up, so you can see their features better. Definitely like the newer versions better of these cards, too. The alibi cards that you look at at the beginning of the game to see who Jack is. Um, and this, the, the, the size of them are the same, uh, of the pictures, but again, just you have the new character looks there, 10 years older. I do think, obviously, the artwork is more detailed, more, you know, you can see a lot more detail in these cards than, say, the cartoony look of the older version. And pretty much the same for the last four characters from the alibi cards, but you can look at these and see the differences for yourself. Here's the difference of the tokens and the Jack card, whether you're seen or not seen. First edition, 10th anniversary. And again, just the artwork is just a lot nicer, uh, a lot more detail, looks nicer. And on the back side of the Jack card where he's, he's hidden, pretty cool there. Now here we have the board. I have just the left half of the board, first edition, 10th anniversary. And from an artistic standpoint, they made the board look a lot darker. Uh, because they wanted it to feel like it was night. Uh, this is the one change in the new version that I do not like uh, as much. Now, I, I always liked the colorful buildings and how colorful the board was, and they kind of sort of muted all that out. It looks very one-dimensional, very bland, and I don't like the new look of the actual art on the board. I like this one a lot better. Now, the biggest difference is how the game's played and how they've changed stuff in the boards. Now here's a picture I made of a mock-up of the changes between this, and these are huge. It might not seem like a lot, but they moved a lot of those manhole covers. Some of them even just one space, but even one space moved really changes how the game is played and the balance of it. And they even added one. So they, they moved a bunch of them and they added one, and that really changes the game. And more on that in a little bit. All right, well, there's the differences. And they are huge, especially the board layout. That is the biggest thing. I'm telling you, it has really changed the way this game plays and how it feels. Up until this point, this has been my least favorite of the Mr. Jack series, all four games, Pocket, 
Phantom of the Opera, Mr. Jack, Mr. Jack in New York. And to tell you how much I love this series in general, Mr. Jack in New York is one of my favorite games of all time. I've played it more than 250 times. I cannot get enough of it. I love this system. This one just felt too similar to New York without being nearly as balanced and nearly as fun and having the excitement of the escapes. And that was the reason why this was in the last place. The other two felt very different, which is why I liked those and this was in last place. But for the last few months, as soon as I heard about this, this immediately was like number two of my most anticipated games for this year because I had a f I knew what they were doing with the board and I've been playing with that mocked up board for the last few months. And man, I gotta tell you, that is the biggest difference here. It took a game that was a little unbalanced 60 to 40 are the statistics with over 10,000 plays online that the investigators win over Jack. This has really done it. Now, I've only played it maybe 15 times. I don't have a statistical sample, but I can tell you it feels very different. And I would, I would beg to differ that this is at least 50-50, if not possibly even maybe slightly weighing in the era of Jack now, but I don't have the statistics to back that up. But it does feel very different. You can escape. Anybody that's in the dark can now escape. If you're standing on a manhole cover and you're in the dark, and Jack was not seen last round, you can escape from all four places. Now, two of those are gonna be blocked, but that means you have two spots to escape, and that was not the case before. Before, even if you were standing on a hole and you were not seen, there was a case that you could possibly be blocked. Now, if you're standing on a hole and you're not there, you're getting out most likely one way or another. Even if you're one space away from a manhole cover and unseen, there's a good chance that you can escape. I think they've doubled the amount of chances to escape in this game, and that's exactly what I wanted this game to have. It was exactly what I felt was missing in this game. After playing Mr. Jack in New York, with all the tension and the fun and the way of escaping and how dangerous it was, this game felt boring compared to it. Now, this game is up there with Mr. Jack in New York. I still like New York better, but this brings it up and allows me to kind of relive and, and, and re-explore this area of Mr. Jack, an area that's balanced and fun. Now, I didn't talk about the, uh, one of the changes of the placements where they moved uh, Miss Stealthy and Watson. And I've talked to Bruno about the reasons why they did this. They wanted to make it a little bit easier on the beginners because Stealthy could escape round two if that's Jack. Uh, uh, and I understand that. Um, that was one of the changes that I, I still, I'm so used to playing it the other way, I didn't like that change, but maybe over time I will. But the one thing I definitely did not like was the board art. I really liked the old color version. You know, when I play Mr. Jack in New York, I love it, but the, the board looks so bland, but it has to kind of be because you're, you're, you know, you're basically building the board as the game goes. Where in this case, the old board looked great and colorful, and then this board, they were trying to make it dark and dingy, which they did. But unfortunately for me, I just like the other more colorful version of the board. So if I took everything new from this version, the characters, the pieces, the new way the board lays out, everything, and just use that with the, the old look of the board would have been my favorite. Uh, the box cover also, it's a little dark and dingy, and I think it looks too much like Mr. Jack in New York. Uh, so I'm not a big fan of the box cover, not a big fan of the art on the board itself, but I love what they've done to balance the game, and I like all the new artwork of the characters. I have them 10 years older, and that is the difference between this and the old version. It's huge. This video was sponsored by Miniature Market's Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.